So before starting this video, I went to my local bakery because I really fancied some cake. Now all the cake in the bakery is a pound and that's why it's so good. It's such good value for money. But this piece of cake that I really wanted was two pounds. And I said to the baker, I said, why is this cake twice the price of all the other cakes? And he said, that's me dearer cake. <laughs> hey, one for the Brits there, one for the UK audience, I think. But if you haven't figured it out, we're going to Madeira. Thank you to MTV for sponsoring this cake, this video, this video. I'm going to tell you, I am very, very excited for going to Madeira. It must not really been on my radar, but my mate Thor, who I often go to Iceland with, he got in touch and he said, you fancy a little few days in Madeira? So I was like, yes, and it was all last minute. This was just a couple of weeks ago. But I couldn't have picked a worse time to go. This is my busiest week with the run up to Christmas and I've just got a new, a new book out. This is my book, Volume 2. So Landscape Photography on location with Volume 2. And it's been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed until finally the printer said, oh yeah, no, it's, it's coming next week. And I'm like, well, I'm in flipping Madeira. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, this isn't for sale yet, but um, it may well be open for pre-orders, um, which will all be signed. All pre-orders will be signed copies. So. Maybe, I don't know, but check the link in the description below, or maybe I'll put a note here saying, yeah, no, it's ready. Might not be, I don't know. But anyway, I'm so excited! Oh. Well, I, uh, I don't really know what happened there. I was gonna do a whole travel montage and then we'd arrive nicely in Madeira, but there was traffic on the way to the airport and then I nearly missed my flight and then I got on my flight and then I landed in Madeira and it was dark. Well, it's now the next morning. I think I need to put on my waterproofs, which is no bad thing. Check out my car. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. And it's convertible, which I don't think I'll get to uh, take advantage of anytime soon. So Madeira is full of photographic potential on what is a tiny island that seems a lot to shoot. And the first place I've come to, the place I'm most excited about is this, the Fanal Forest. It's just this beautiful area of incredibly characterful trees, which, and get this, is famous for fog. <laughs> like, like fog is not a rare occurrence here. So for me, when I heard that, I just thought flipping heck, I'm gonna have to go. So. Uh, yeah, here we are and, and there's no fog. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. I'm sure it'll blow through. Well, hey, <laughs> oh man. So after walking around and uh, generally taking in the whole area, simultaneously feeling sorry for myself that there was no mist, and I should have known because mist can just envelop in seconds. And that's what's so beautiful about these changeable, windy, moody conditions. I'm ready to shoot my first composition of the day, which is probably not gonna be my best one because I'm just excited. I wanna get one in the can. And then inevitably I will slow down, relax, and hopefully shoot more images. But let's just get this one done. Oh, it's windy. But with that wind comes all of this beautiful weather and atmosphere. Man, this is, uh, this is difficult. This is difficult. It looks beautiful. However, the wind and the rain are going straight into my face and of course into my lens. Oh yeah, it's coming down. It's coming down. Oh boy. Right, get some shelter. <laughs> Oh man, 
So after taking that first shot, which I thought was okay, but I, I don't know, I felt very frantic. I went and found a second composition, which, yeah, you can just see my camera there. And I managed to fire off one shot just as the tail end of the fog rolled through. So I couldn't film any of it, unfortunately. And now we're just waiting and hoping that the fog is going to come back. Um, but yeah, actually this is surprisingly turning into quite a frantic photo shoot. <laughs> Not what I expected. It's been an hour, so uh, <laughs> I think it's time to get some lunch. Oh, oh man. I'll tell you what, I'm in need of something to eat. I bought, <laughs> bought plenty of food with me because I knew, or I had a sneaking suspicion that I'd be spending all day here. So it's now 11.20 in the morning. I arrived here at probably about half past seven. And during that time, I got 10 minutes of mist, of which I took two photos. The first one you've seen, the second one I was hoping the mist would blow through so I could choose again. And I actually only got one image. But yeah, this, I mean, you can see the mist is just starting to fade away. So um, yeah, glad I got that image and very relieved that I got it as well because uh, yeah, not, not too sure about the first one, but that second one feels much better. So after spending seven hours at the Fennel Forest and getting about 10 minutes of fog, it was time for me to head back to the hotel to meet my mate Thor, who was just on his way from Iceland and would be landing very shortly. But unfortunately for Thor, things didn't quite go to plan. Well, I just got a phone call from Thor, who's arrived here at Madeira, Madeira Airport. And unfortunately he didn't bring his driver's license, so they won't hire him a car. So I've had to come and pick him up. There he is, the man himself. <laughs> what happened, man? Was that? What happened? Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing serious, at least. <laughs> Can I fit my bag in here? Oh, so this is the Fennel Forest take two. Let's hope for more than 10 minutes of mist today. Look at this. Absolutely fantastic. I tell you what, this is, uh, the drive here was really sketchy, man. I couldn't drive more than 20 miles an hour because the fog was so thick and we've arrived at the Fennel Forest for the second time the next day and Thor Although not bringing his license, his driving license, has brought the fog. <laughs> All oh, right, so I am filled with dread until I get my first couple of images now I know I've already shot a couple of images here yesterday and it's that that fills me with dread because conditions were so fleeting once I've got this in the can a bit windy I'll relax and for every image I take I will relax more and more into the photo shoot that feeling of dread will disappear that dread that anxiety that the fog's gonna lift and then hopefully my images will improve so I've got the Nikon Z72 and the 24 to 70 f4 lens. So I'm at f5.6 ISO 64, it's giving me a shutter speed of a quarter second, but I've got to wait, I've got to wait for the wind. Like the wind blows through and then it drops for a second, so it's those moments in between the gusts. All right, there we go. Ah, oh, <laughs> feels so much better. Uh, I think with each uh, with 
each image I take, I'm going to try and get more and more complex with my images because uh, up until now, I've pretty much just shot like groups of trees. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Now, don't get me wrong. Up until now, I am ecstatic with the three images that I have taken. However, they all feel quite familiar. They all feel like images and trees that I have seen before, and I was really struggling to put my own stamp on this location. And fortunately, or unfortunately, something was about to force my hand that would mean I would shoot this forest in a way that I would have never considered before. Oh, so my, uh, my tripod just blew over in the wind. <laughs> and this 24 to 70 f4 lens has had it, unfortunately. It's gonna have to be repaired, um, which is a bit frustrating. I do have the 100 to 400, so that's gonna be interesting. But yeah, rest of the trip, no 24 to 70. Let's hope that the camera still works. Damn it. Let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> looks like the camera's still working. This is gonna make for an interesting end of the video because this location doesn't necessarily lend itself to a 100 to 400 lens. Oh well, let's see. Might be the best thing that happened to me. All right, <laughs> so. Um, it's difficult. So I took a few shots that are essentially just trees in the mist, <laughs> like lone trees, very flat, very flat images, no depth, which is, is really frustrating. And now I'm working on a composition that might, I don't know if you can just see this tree here, that, that might work for me. But overall, I'd say this is certainly not a long lens, a long lens location, especially not when it's this foggy, when visibility is about the distance you need to be with this lens. So when you're the correct distance from your subjects, that's the visibility. So you can't see your subjects, which is all right. But hey, we got some images already. So I'm not that, I'm not feeling too disheartened. So I was slightly concerned when I was forced into using the 100 to 400 in this tightly packed gnarly woodland, not the most ideal lens. But you know what, it's been all right because it's forced me to look at things differently and that is no bad thing. And I'm not complaining because I got plenty of shots on the 24 to 70. So we're all good. Now I'm gonna show you all of the images from the 100 to 400, but first I need to thank the sponsor of this video without whom this trip likely wouldn't happen, and that is MPB. Now, if like me, you have smashed your 24 to 70 lens, you might wanna buy a new lens or a new piece of gear. Well, MPB is a place where you can buy used gear, but you can also sell them your gear, or you can simply trade your gear. So I've used MPB to sell my own Canon 5D Mark IV last year, and I was pleasantly surprised at how easy and fat free it was. You just put in the lens or camera, whatever you're selling, the condition that it's in, and then they send you a quote, and if you're happy with the quote, they send you a shipping label, pack it up, send it off, done. But what I was also pleasantly surprised was, with was the price that they offered me for the gear. I was expecting way less, and the price actually was very fair. So if you're buying, selling, or want to trade your gear, Go to mpb.com. And now, please enjoy all the images from my walk around <laughs> with the 100 to 400. I say all images, there's probably about three. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, I've enjoyed myself. All right, cheers guys. Thanks very much for watching. Oh.
Now there's no denying it, the Fennel Forest is absolutely beautiful, but whilst walking around with a 24-70 lens, I had this constant nagging thought at the back of my mind that all of my images look the same as every other image that I've seen from this forest. I recognised trees, I recognised compositions, and I was feeling a bit down because I was struggling to put my own stamp on things, until I broke that lens and was forced to use the 100-40. Now looking at this set of images, I think that is the best thing that happened to me on my trip to the Fennel Forest. Now I'll be the first to admit I wouldn't have broken out the 100-400 lens at this location unless forced to, but it is a stark reminder to always try something different, always try and be creative, and don't ever think that there's only one approach to photography. So the next time you're out in a wide angle location, Put away your wide angle lens and break out the longest beast you have. So this is the lens in question which I broke and it was effectively, it was, it was sort of kinked. It was bent in two so the zoom ring wouldn't work, it was completely done. But Thor, Mr. Strongman over here, has just douche forced it back into, back into place and now it works. So, little bonus feature at the end of the video, have we just saved the rest of our Madeira trip? Has Thor fixed what I was convinced was a smashed lens? All right, let's have a go, see if we can get it working. The irony being if it fell off the roof of the car. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, autofocus on. So far, so good. Is it working? It looks good. Sharp. That is a working <laughs> lens. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I questioned the integrity of Nikon gear. Built like a tank.